Hello everyone, I'm Alan from Technology Moments. Welcome back to our videos. And today, a topic that we have been asked about a lot, and it is about Omata Access Points. Well, actually many other brands, of course, but we're gonna start by creating this content for Omata Access Points. This one in particular, on how to create a mesh network with Omata Access Points. How beneficial this may be, and several answers to many common questions like, how to set it up easily, do I need to have everything in my network from TP-Link OMATA series? Do all access points need to be identical? Do I need to keep the controller alive? Well, among others, that we'll cover in our next videos. So maybe the most important answer we are having right now is do I need the rest of the hardware in my network to be from TP-Link OMATA series? Well, the answer is no. And as a matter of fact, we are connecting to a network, as you can see right now, involving several switches, brands, and a unified Dream Machine Pro. And the only hardware that is going to be managed by our Omata network controller are these two access points, um, which, by the way, will answer the third question if all APs need to be identical. Mesh mode networks are nothing extraordinary and simply include the possibility of having access points that connect to the main network, not necessarily in a wired manner, but they can in turn connect to other access points that can be up the network either wired or wirelessly connected. This creates an exceptional coverage. Well, so let's start and right to the point. It is always better to start from new hardware, but if you're gonna deploy some that have been already used, upgrade them to the latest firmware, restore them to factory settings, and you'll be ready to go. If, for example, you had them previously in an active controller, like the OC200, an OC300, or maybe a software-based controller, make sure that they have been forgotten, removed, or erased from those controllers. This is something that is very important. So let's start by installing the controller, just in case you had not done it before. In case you don't have a hardware-based network controller, uh, we've already seen how to install the network controller. Just download the latest version from the Omata website, install Java, which is necessary, and start the network controller. Go for the basic settings, answering the first few questions, and you'll be ready to go in a matter of minutes. If you're familiar with virtual machines or Hyper-V and your hardware can't support it, that has always been our recommendation to run the software-based network controller in a virtual machine as you can take it wherever you want and backups and flexibility of the solution has no match. This as well as planning your intended deployment either in a piece of paper or in a cell phone or laptop is the most important preparation that you can have. Here a phrase that I like to share with everybody I work with. So let's start with the preparations. As we said, preparations for this procedure are very simple and are very important. First, make sure that your hardware has been reset to factory default settings. This in case that they are not new. Before you do that, you can make sure that it is updated to the latest firmware. This is not mandatory, but it may save a lot of time if any of those updates involve solving issues related to mesh networks. And third, and as silly as it may sound, make sure that cabling to the wired access points is well terminated or ideally certified. Trust me. Cabling is usually the most underestimated issue when deploying any network solution. Now, adopting the access points. We're going to adopt this access point as the primary wired access point. This is an Omata EAP773 Wi-Fi 7 access point, by the way, extraordinary access point, and our secondary first mesh node is going to be a Wi-Fi 6 EAP610, a Wi-Fi 6 yet very powerful access point. Can any other access point connect to it Downstream? Yes, they can, and that is usually what happens. With a controller app on running, you will need to adopt or have already one OMATA device running on the network, so it will detect the pending devices or wireless downlink access points. Very important here too. That's why you need at least one access point for the other access points to be able to be adopted in your network. This usually takes about a minute, and with your first access point adopted, uh, once you have adopted it, you will be able to see the others appear here. Once you have adopted the first one successfully, connect the secondary access points, ideally close to your wire node. This and labeling the access points might be quite important when deploying many access points, say for example 20 or 30 or even more. Also, the network map that you intend to create is something like this. Like I said, even if it is on a piece of paper or your mobile device, it'll be of great help 
for identifying which of your access point is going to be located next and where. Second and subsequent devices will be ready in a matter of minutes, showing you in the controller details to which access point each one of the nodes is connected currently, as you can see right here. This one is the upstream access point, and this one is the downlinked access point. That's how simple it is to deploy mesh networks with Omata access points. This step, by the way, answered the fourth question, which was, do all access points need to be identical? Well, the answer is no. But important considerations to keep in mind here. The most powerful access points that you have, those should be the wire nodes of your mesh networks. For example, in this graph, these two. A question that many have is how severely is performance going to be affected? Well, you might have a slightly decreased bandwidth, especially when you have many downstream access points and they are being used, as it is obvious. Quality of the signal as well as latency is not going to be greatly affected. Bandwidth, as in any other Wi-Fi network or even wire network, is going to be divided among clients connected, in this case of the wireless access points, to the same radio or the client access point. As we've said many times, nothing beats a wired access point. So if you want to have performance in your network, you might want to wire directly to those access points. And if they are located further than 300 feet away, of course, you can always choose to have the media changer for which you can extend up to many kilometers by switching to fiber optics and then back to copper. This will let you locate pretty distant access points. We invite you to take a look at our video about this specific topic. Okay, guys, I hope that this video was as informative as intended. Your kind support to our channel, liking this video and subscribing. As always, the idea is to share with you the experiences we've had so you can make an informed decision. See you next time.